All right, so this is one of the things I want to talk about in regards to The Rise of Skywalker and uh, the audience response to it. I am truly, honestly shocked with the audience response. I am. I don't know why I am, but I am. So when you look at how the audience responded to the sequel trilogy as a whole, it, it's kind of a weird thing, right? Go back to 2015. We had been starved for Star Wars content, at least movies, for 10 years. This was going to be a continuation off of the 1983 Return of the Jedi, not the 2005 Revenge of the Sith. The prequels had always kind of left a bad taste in many of the mouths of Star Wars fans, right? And, and not me specifically. I have my criticisms, but over time, I've grown to have a lot of affection and love for the prequels, surprisingly. They're not going to be any match for the OT. In fact, quite frankly, nothing is. It's the OT, greatest trilogy of all time. But when you look at the sequel trilogy, right, J.J. Abrams had this impossible task of attempting to almost like bring us up to the present in order to bring us up to current times with Star Wars and how he was going to do that, especially when they weren't really going to be using what Lucas had wanted them to use originally for whatever reason. If you've read kind of the idea of the outlines of what Lucas wanted for the sequel trilogy, dealing with the wills and going into like the midichlorian, you know, on a, on a microbiotic level and, and understanding that it felt like it, it just didn't really feel like it was going to grip audiences. And let's be real. It probably wasn't. One of the biggest jokes that comes out of the prequel trilogy still is midichlorians. In fact, they don't get brought up very often at all outside of the Phantom Menace. People just don't like it, so they just moved on from that. It appears in other parts of the canon and other parts of lore, but at the end of the day, it's still pretty much relegated to just that movie, and that's essentially where it stays, right? We, we know it exists, but we don't talk about it. It's like your weird, crazy uncle from Christmas. You're like, oh God, he's here. That whole plot line again, because it just becomes hard to explain, and it also sounds kind of dumb. But when you get it with Revenge of the Sith and you tie it into Darth Plagueis the Wise in that story and you look at what Palpatine was doing, it makes a lot of sense. It makes more sense, I should say. And that actually brings us to the sequel trilogy as a whole. So with The Force Awakens, Ryan J.J. Uh, Abrams started us off on a grand adventure, introducing us to Rey, who was actually now taking over for the original character that Lucas wanted to put as the lead in the sequel trilogy, Kira, which arguably was the name of Amelia Clark's character in Solo, kind of a, a subtle nod, if you will, an homage, in my opinion. But he did. He wanted a young female Jedi to be the lead of this trilogy. So that's something that J.J. and Lawrence Kasdan kept. But J.J. wanted to tell the story of Finn, a stormtrooper who said screw it and was done. He was leaving the uh, the, the 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 first order he was going to he was going to defect, which is an excellent storyline and one that I do feel that they ultimately dropped. And we had Poe, the hotshot pilot. And again, his character arc was more about learning to be a leader, but actually being a leader. And that does get kind of realized at the end of The Rise of Skywalker, which is something that I quite enjoyed. So when you start breaking down the different films and the audience reactions to the different films, because I'm kind of getting off point here, and I admit that. When you, when you start looking at the audience reaction to this, you start to see... Uh, a, a shift, right? So when we were starved for Star Wars from 2005 to 2015, people came out in droves for The Force Awakens. $245 million opening weekend, $2.02 .02 billion worldwide gross movie just made bank. Rogue One came out the next year. I think that did $1.1 billion. Then we had The Last Jedi come out, which did $1.3 billion. So like almost around $800 million less then The Force Awakens, and it utterly eviscerated and destroyed the Star Wars fan base. For two years, people have been kind of like cringing at the thought of The Rise of Skywalker coming out because they don't know if they're ever going to be able to come back from The Last Jedi, the amount of disappointment that came from Ryan Johnson's movie. He tried to subvert expectations too much, fundamentally mishandled legacy characters, and in the case of, let's say, Admiral Akbar, outright mishandled him to the point of where the actor in the costume who had been the actor since Return of the Jedi was upset and felt completely disrespected uh, and humiliated at the end of it. I mean, he went back to his trailer and cried after his scene was over and they asked him to come down and just say, that's a wrap into the camera. Like he just felt humiliated. That was a big, that's, that's a solid way of looking at how Ryan Johnson approached 
The Last Jedi. And we've had two years of people just being frustrated and angry at that movie and it building animosity and it building more anger on top of it. And then just also worrying that JJ Abrams, who is known for, for not really being able to stick a landing or finish a trilogy, so to speak, was coming in to helm this last movie. I was nervous too. When I saw it in LA the other day, I walked out. There were other critics out there that were liking it. Other ones there that didn't like it. I felt elated because this was a, a solid conclusion in my mind and one that I felt really worked. Had its problems 100%, but what you work with, what you got, and he he turned lemons into lemonade to the best of his ability, uh, and, and he did what he could, and I was happy with it. And then, of course, I went and I did my review, and my review was mixed. People were like, you know, oh, the critics hate the movie. You hate, they hate the movie. And I'm like, eh, none of that matters to me. I, I am I'm a known person for liking a lot of things that others don't like. I liked Terminator Dart Fake. That actually really triggered a whole lot of people. That to me is pretty funny because I still like the movie. No amount of shaming me over something that I enjoy is going to make me not enjoy it. <laughs> Just saying. So I went back and I saw the, the Rise of Skywalker again last night. And, and I put up a video where I was criticizing some people. And I was expecting there to be a massive blowback. I was expecting there to be a massive attack on me, right? Like, how dare you have these opinions? That didn't happen. Like, amazingly, that didn't happen. Amazingly, a lot of people got what I was trying to say. And they supported me. And then I'm seeing comments from people that were talking about the movie. And they came, I mean, overwhelmingly, I'm getting DMs on Twitter. I'm getting messages on Facebook. I'm getting a whole bunch of comments everywhere else talking about how much people loved the movie. How many people felt that it was finally good to be a Star Wars fan again? How many people walked into it expecting the worst, but at least were happy with what they saw? There are so many people out there that are enjoying this movie. So many people that have been saying, I'm seeing it again with my family. I'm going with my friends. I can't wait to take my kids. I ran into a guy this morning when I was going to get a, an energy drink and he's an old grandpa dude. And I'm like, oh man, you know, see Star Wars this weekend? Cause he saw my hat. I have a Star Wars hat. And I'm like, he's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go check it out with my, I'm taking my grandkids kids to go see it and I'm all like are they excited and he's like they're super excited to go and see it and I'm like that's what I want as a as a as a 37 year old man child Star Wars fan <laughs> that's what I wanted to hear people excited to see the movie people happy to go with their families and get that experience that's what all I want from Star Wars is just to have that shared experience again and I may not have gotten it entirely in my first screening or even my second screening the people I saw it with were mixed on it the people I saw it with in both screenings were mixed on it but I've talked to so many people at the end of the day that came back saying it was either better than I expected or it was awesome some people have said that it's better than Empire and I'm like okay pump your brakes there Sparky let's let's not get too far set ahead of ourselves here it it did the opposite of the last jedi and that's why the audience is responding and i'm not going to use like i don't want to use rotten tomatoes as a pure on metric right but what we have just to bring it up as a reference point not as being the be all end all but as a reference point is that the audience is currently at 86 percent with about six thousand verified purchases what that means and why this is somewhat important is that it means that these are people who bought tickets for Star Wars through Fandango, and they're the ones that are very happy with it. In fact, a lot of people have come out and been like, I am very happy with this. I am super happy with this. I really, really, really want to see uh, what this whole thing is about. And like, I, I see it again and dive more into it and, and get more of the backstory because there's actually a lot of lore that's in there. There's a lot of little things that you're going to miss your first time. And it makes me happy as a Star Wars fan to watch people come out and just go, yes, yes, Star Wars is back. And we have The Mandalorian right now, which is amazing. And I, I, I love it. It's probably my favorite show of the year. Uh, we've got uh, an excellent cliffhanger on that one right now, too. My God, if anything happens, if any, anything happens, you know what I'm talking about, those of you who've seen it, anything happens, we riot. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> also, real quick side note, Deborah Chow is amazing at directing these episodes. Please give her a movie. Please give her a movie. Me to you. Uh, if you agree, let me know in the comments. I think you guys are going to really, I think those of you who are diehard Mando fans are like Deborah Chow gets all the things. Anyway, I'm geeking out again on something else. 
kind of tangentially related, but but still, then you have Je Jedi Fallen Order, which is, again, another amazing game, a great story, a great gameplay experience. We've got Star Wars Resistance Season 2, which uh, I'm waiting for it to finish up, honestly. Uh, I think they're in their break right now, so I can I can catch up on their break a and then everything else. But people have been telling me that while it's still very kid friendly, it's it's been building up the story taking place after the events of The Last Jedi. You know, there's good there's a new Kylo comic that came out that gives us a lot of backstory as to what happened and the con the conflicting nature of who Kylo is uh, or who Ben Solo was before becoming Kylo. And again, just giving us more backstory into that, which really kind of fleshes out the character a bit. And they're they're, they're going on this course correcting situation right now. They're going on this course correct path to try to get Star Wars back to where it was in 2015. Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi fundamentally broke Star Wars. And it's not that I think he's a malicious person who did it with malicious intent. That's the kind of stories he likes to tell. He likes to push the boundaries and subvert expectations. But when you're dealing with a saga that's all about familial bonds and, and, and that legacy matters, and then you say that it doesn't matter, people get upset. He shouldn't have been the person to do that. JJ should have done all three. And that's what we're seeing quite a bit of commentary coming out of this. So the great thing is the audiences are loving the rise of Skywalker. They're loving the end of the Skywalker saga. They're loving it because they feel that it's finally okay to be a Star Wars fan again and that they're be giving content that feels like it's Star Wars and makes them happy. And as, as for a person who has been angry and frustrated at The Last Jedi for two years, who has countlessly attacked the movie for two years, because I have, I'll admit that, I was frustrated with it so frustrated and I didn't feel any of the answers I got out of anyone official at Lucasfilm right away gave me any kind of satisfaction and very happy with where things have gone. They listened. They listened. May not be perfect. May not be everything you want, but you, you have to admit that they listened. And the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, if you want to believe it as being a factual thing and not just a metric of or a reference, for example, People believe it too. And I'm I'm very I'm very I'm very excited for the future of Star Wars. I'm very happy to see where things go, and I'm curious to know your thoughts on it too. And please don't hold back. You're, I mean, I want it honest commentary. Let me know down in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day. Thank you for watching, and peace out. Hey, thank you very much for watching the video. If you want to keep the conversation going, and if you made it this far, you clearly do, come on in and join the Discord. Link is in the video description. Can't wait to see you there. Have yourself a great day, and peace out.